we get the draw, and now we still have to make ourselves indestructible. Unfortunately, because of the four power on the giant. And we will draw here. Taking that ooze. And we can grab Polkranos, I believe. Can we not? From the grave. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's grab that free mana. Because we're going to be using it all within our ooze, which is a creature ability. Yup. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch Hello Good Game. Today we're playing with Mono Green Food, Big Wolves. Wicked Wolf is absolutely amazing. More than 25% of the current arena meta consists of Demir Rogues, or roughly 25%. Wicked Wolf eats rogues for dinner. Well, let me tell you what, every single rogue that your opponent plays, Wicked Wolf will chomp it out of the air, on the ground, go indestructible, survive the death touch, whatever needs to be done against rogues, Wicked Wolf is your boy. Uh, so we got Big Wolf today, thanks to his help. <laughs> We're gonna break down the deck list in its entirety, talking about each individual card, the strengths, the weaknesses, why they were chosen to be included within the deck. We'll move into the strategies and synergies next. You know, it's great to know what's in your deck. It's better to know how they can all work together, the different play lines and synergies. Uh, that you have and just your overall strategy as well right finally we jump into the gameplay footage which is absolute doozy today we go in with a 100 win rate which is really cool over an hour and a half of gameplay footage uh for you guys we're breaking down all of our sideboard interactions against the specific matchups we have you guys are going to learn how to play traditional a little bit more proficiently you know a lot of beginners do play best of one but i really encourage you guys once you are feeling okay you know maybe you hit diamond for the first time something like this let's take a look at traditional let's incorporate the sideboard let's take you from a five up to a seven and then you'll be able to grow into that eight nine and ten uh skill set player so getting into it we have four copies of gilded goose this is a zero two with fly when it enters the battlefield create a food token we can pay two to tap it to create an additional food token which is really nice you know you can hold this up as a defender defend and then if you still have mana left over dump it into a food which is great we can also tap it to sacrifice a food adding one mana of any color a single copy of primal might in our main board we do have more of them in the sideboard sorcery speed for one plus x target creature you control gets plus x plus x until end of turn then it fights up to one target creature you don't control we're talking about beating up rogues today you know that is our main objective basically when we play arena right now you know even with such a diverse meta there's a lot of rogue players primal might is great just snag something you make your guy bigger and you can smash in for hopefully hopefully a lot of damage into our two drops we've got four copies of trail of crumbs and enchantment when it enters the battlefield create a food token much like gilded goose and whenever you sacrifice a food you may pay one if you do look at the top two cards of your library put a permanent card from among them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order that's an absolutely amazing draw engine uh you know you can sacrifice the food just for the draw or we can sacrifice the food uh through our card requirements later on uh you know a good example of that that we've already talked about is the gilded goose you know typically we do have to pay two to sacrifice uh, the food to gain three life, but with the Gilded Goose, we just have to tap the Goose to sacrifice a food, um, and that adds one mana, and we can use that one mana in Trail of Crumbs, so you can really see how these cards are starting to work together. We also have Tangled uh, Florhedron. This is an MDFC coming in tapped, adding a green to our pool. It's also a 1-1 one, one creature that can tap itself to add one green to our pool as well. So, you know, if you get this, uh, with a full field or a full hand of land, you can play your two land and then on turn two, you play the creature. So it's basically like you play two mana sources on turn two and then on turn three, you drop uh, your fourth basically. And that's really cool. That's gonna help you ramp and maybe get ahead of your opponent a little bit. If you have a hand that doesn't have a lot of land, don't worry, just play this in tapped on turn one uh, and again, maybe even if you don't have a one drop uh, to utilize right away, then you can just play slow. Two copies of Scavenging Ooze, a 2-2, in which we can pay one to exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Scavenging Ooze and gain one life. We all know what this deals with. Krok says things with escape, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, we're seeing the rise of Polkranos as well, so it's nice to snag that out of play. 
only two copies because you know we don't see uh Uro. i almost forgot the name of it but uh you know that used to be in every single deck so scavenging ooze is still a great card but it doesn't need to be as consistent as it used to be at least in the main board Moving on, we've got four copies of Llanowar Visionary, bringing up our first three drop, a 2-2, and it can tap itself to add one green to our pool, uh, you know, much like the Florhedron or whatever. Uh, and then when it enters the battlefield, we actually get to draw a card as well. Uh, that's very, very good in my opinion. It costs three, so it's a little expensive, but uh, having it replace itself is absolutely amazing. And then, you know, the ability to ramp a little bit further on into the mid game is very good as well, I believe. Three copies of Lovestruck Beast, a 5-5 that can only attack if you control a 1-1 creature. We have Heart's Desire at Sorcery Speed as the adventure that will allow us to create that 1-1 white creature. It's a uh, token, right? We have two copies of Kazandu Mammoth and Kazandu Valley coming in tapped, adding a green to our pool. The Mammoth has landfall at 3-3. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, it will get plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. So, you know, going to that 5-5 to smash in is very cool. Four copies of Wicked Wolf, a 3-3, and when it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Sacrifice food, put a plus one, plus one counter on Wicked Wolf. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. So, you know, you can have this enter the battlefield, eat a food, fight your creature with indestructible. It's tapped. Who cares? It's got summoning sickness anyways. And, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Three copies of Vivian Monsters Advocate, coming in with three loyalty, static ability of playing creatures from the top of our library anytime which we can look at and then plus one create a three three with either reach trample or vigilance you know reach is your defensive trample is your offensive and vigilance you know is more offensive but can also be a little bit defensive as well minus two whenever you cast your next creature spell this turn search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana put it into the battlefield then shuffle your library moving forward we have two copies of the great hench for a nine Spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. We can tap it to add two green to our pool, also gaining two life. And whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card, which is really, really quite groovy. And one of our main engines of the deck, surprisingly, a 7-6 seven, six for six. Troll King in the house, Vigilance Trample. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, create three food tokens. We can also sacrifice three food to return the Troll King from the graveyard to the battlefield at... Uh, sorcery speed on our turn maybe at instant speed on our turn doesn't say uh you know i assume that it is only at sorcery speed though i didn't pay attention anyways you know this is great vigilance trample seven six i'm coming over uh that should stomp over any rogues that you encounter and now this is a good deck against other builds i just i hate on rogues a lot right four castle garen breaks in which we can tap for five adding six mana to our pool you know for creatures or abilities of creatures 18 forests and three gingerbread cabins when it enters the battlefield if you have three or more forests you're gonna you know create a food token which is great make sure to note that castle garen break is not a forest moving on we do play traditional today best of three we have a sideboard Three copies of Chainweb Arachner. A 1, 2, a 3, twin enters battlefield, deal damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. Escape for 5, exiling 4 of the cards from your graveyard. It escapes with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. This is great against anything with flying, specifically rogues. There's a lot of flying rogues. Run a foul for 1, instant speed, target opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. Story Dream Trawler. We're kind of seeing that enter play again, and this is just a very cheap, very easy way to deal with it. Uh, you know, we're talking about rogues having flying as well. This is a great way to deal with that as well. Uh, two copies of Scavenging Ooze. We already had that main board talked about. Two copies of the Harbinger. This is a 4-3 with Hexproof from Black. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or Planeswalker, look at that many cards from the top of your library. Reveal a creature or Garrick Planeswalker card from among them. Put it into your hand, then the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. That's good, right? Uh, you know, a lot of removal comes in the form of Black, so not only are you gaining an advantage because it can't be removed but you're also probably getting a draw from that as well uh, so any removal that did take place you're mitigating through card draw a single copy of witch's oven you know it's just great to create food it's kind of a one-off and you know it also is really good against any adventure spells because when an adventure spell targets something you can sacrifice it and then the creature goes to the grave as well uh, you know, we also have one love struck beast. We've got some of those main board. Uh, it's really good for getting uh, the great henge in. The beast can hit on turn three. The henge can hit on turn four because of the power being five. 
that the hench gets reduced by five and goes down to four. So that's pretty cool. Two copies of Thrashing Bronted on three, four, and you can pay one to sacrifice it, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Uh, you know, this is really going to come down to the deck you play against, and they're going to really need some oppressive enchantments or artifacts. One Kolga, the Titan Ape, for six, seven, six. When it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. When it attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. That's the key part there. Fight's great, but continually destroying artifacts and enchantments they control is even better. We can pay two to return target human you control to its owner's hand. Kolga will gain indestructible until the end of turn. Uh, I don't think we have any humans is the only thing. You know what I mean? Uh, so don't worry about that. And two more additional copies of Primal Might that we already talked about. Uh, we're going to get into the sideboard uh, specific strategies for the matches as we play them. My general strategy for people who are new to sideboarding is what held no value in your deck, what holds more value than that in your sideboard, or uh, you know just kind of reverse that question. And if you don't know what was really bad, you can look in and just you know what would be better. Um, and then you can be like, okay, they were creature heavy, I need more removal, right? So Primal Might, uh, maybe Kolga stuff like this or it's like well they had a lot of removal uh and no creatures i don't need my removal and then i'm gonna take some uh harbingers or something right or if they're flyers like you know just base it on the matches and then what was good put it in take out what was bad easy peasy lemon squeezy quick reminder that i am live on youtube every morning at 6 a.m mountain standard i'd love your company we have daily content and we're on twitch most days as well so all of that is going to be available within the link tree link description below we have a 500 000 gem giveaway for those of you partaking so do not miss out on that and today we're playing with magic the gathering arena assistant available for free to download within the overwolf link in the description below the best tracker for magic the gathering arena deck stats videos write-ups metagame analysis there is so much going on here that it would take me a full one hour video to break it all down so check that out I hope you guys enjoy mono green food this deck is an absolute beast i love it we had a 100 percent win rate within low mythic here today uh hashtag feed me not much more to say thank you for your time and attention if you can afford to support financially i encourage you to do so on twitch patreon youtube and our amazon link i really appreciate it and uh, we're trying to get back to two videos a day here for you guys so hold on and get ready we're going to flood you with some content take care enjoy don't forget to watch to the end so you don't miss out on some once in a lifetime news that you cannot afford to forget. Peace. Alrighty, that first match was pretty dominating on our end. Oh, our game messed up again. This happened to us yesterday too. We got the big old 2-0 uh, stacked up here. We lost all of our fonts. Hashtag font kit. Ah, I mean, there's no creatures. We got Trail of Crumbs. If it had a goose, I'd keep it. Two Trail of Crumbs. You actually just have to play the game uh, based off pictures which is actually normally what I do. <laughs> if it didn't have the text below and just the pictures, now we're all finally on a level playing field for myself. <laughs> um, we do need at least a creature to build into. Um, but then if we cut a land, it just takes away from that. So I guess we toss a trail. We play slow. No, we play fast and use the creature as a double land on turn two. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Song of the day is Thriller. I can perfect a Thriller dance. I want to do a Halloween stream and like, uh, you know, get all costumed up. I see all these ladies doing cosplay. And it's like, uh, I could do this, boys. I'll dress up like Jace every damn day. Only sexy Jace, though. Uh, you guys know which Jace I'm talking about. This historic Jace, I believe it's from Ixalan. I call him Sexy Jace. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah, the game is bizugged. It did this to us yesterday as well, so I'm not really sure how to uh, deal with that at all. We're dropping our third land. We have four on the field, a few turns still until uh, we can get there, but... Mm. We have a, a user saying that I should dress up as Neo. What do you guys think? We should do some, some Matrix cosplay? <laughs> oh gosh, big fan of the Matrix, uh, to be honest. I absolutely love that movie. I think that's, well no, the first one's the best, but I, I really like the second one. Um, 
as well. Heck, even the third one's good, to be honest. Just, you don't get movies like that these days. Like, I tried to get into, uh, you know, for example, something that should be as good. John Wick, you know? Same area of people. Uh, eh. Wasn't so hot. I mean, I get it, but it's like, meh. Was not as good as The Matrix. Sorry. Lots of weird movies I like, uh, now that we're on the topic. Cloud Atlas. This is a another movie. Basically, I try to share all the movies I like in hopes that you guys recognize them. And you're like, oh, I know that movie. He'd also like this other movie. Huh? I watched way too much TV. For years and years and years. Even uh, before I started doing this, uh, when I was an operator, you know, in the control room, you just always had the TV going, right? It's like watching something. So on. I wasn't like, you know, you still get your work done. You weren't just like staring at it, but it's just like you always had something chilling. Um, and now this is a habit that has stuck with me forever. I can't break it. So I just always uh, have something rolling. Alrighty, we're getting close. We do have five land in play. This will act as not only our sixth, but we're gonna get a draw as well. And, uh, yeah, let's just keep pushing in. We have 44 cards left, so I'm not too worried about a mill there. Down to three, uh, down to two. So if we can kind of remove some of these things, and I'll double block this enforcer, all right? Ah! Uh. Okay, so there goes that thought. Rely on the land drop. We could also uh, Garen Brig for it. We get the land. Oh, we didn't even need it. I've gone too far. This is the nameless card. It beats all others, right? Look at the art on that thing. Like that dude is weird. I like how he's just got like that bucket of embers at the bottom, just dragging it down. Bunch of stuff on his back. There's a, a cyberpunk movie, or is he just in the game? Maybe Keanu Reeves really is the one. That game has been delayed how many times, right? Cyberpunk has been super duper delayed. I feel like a gazillion times. So I'm curious to see what it's like because, you know, a lot of game developers have the tendency to release something and then, uh, you know, be like, hey, it's a, a work in progress. We're going to release more stuff for it, uh, which is fine, whatever. But do you guys remember buying a game back in the day that didn't come? With DLC, and it's not that I don't want DLC, but I don't want 90% of the game to be all DLC. You know what I mean? Oh, that's. I want to uh, just replay this, I guess. What I'm saying is, I miss Super Mario 64, uh, you know, Donkey Kong 64, where you got a whole experience in one, and it was like, there you go. Uh, and it's not that I don't want other things, but I don't want. It to be based upon those things uh so it's eh. we're way off topic right now uh anyways we're gonna draw some cards here with trail of crumbs um and we just we've got two troll kings in our graveyard now and uh <laughs> we just pulled two right off the top uh -huh. this guy won't go away i don't know what to do about it so that's the thing <laughs> we get to smack in for another one why not at least the 19 fits within our, like, frame there. The 20 didn't. It, like, stacked up and covered her face up.
All right, little baby crab mail. Not really scaring us. Well, actually, maybe it is. We're 29. We should move it, move it. Uh, you know, the trample will be really nice here. And we're just going to lay on that a little bit. Oh, my gosh. This into the story will not F right off. It's like no hand, full hand. No hand, full hand. Woo. Big woofs. Uh, they hold up two mana here. Probably remove our Roliolio. We do need one more treasure, is the thing, to get the third in play. There it is. Oh, there it is. So we're gonna Garen break. We can. Oh, but this isn't. Uh, that won't work. Look at this huge six here. <laughs> uh, nothing to see here. Everything's fine. I have one mana for Wari's Disruption, but, uh... Oh! You should just counter the one that makes the, the food instead of destroying the one that's already in play. Am I wrong on this? Because now we just got... Like, they lost their spell. We made three food, which just replays this guy. That's not correct. They should have countered that spell. And we have 22 in our, like, it just doesn't make sense. Let's take our draw here. Um, we're gonna, you know, we should take the henge, but we don't want to be drawing too much, actually. So I'm gonna go and take our beloved food generator, generation, and uh, I'm gonna be absolutely egregious here. Three feasting troll kings in play. Let's take one more draw. Drawing is gonna get us. Drawing too much. 27. Ah, screw it. We probably could have taken the hench too. Oh well. It's fine. We're okay. Nothing to worry about. See? All attacks. I remember the load times in Duel of the Planeswalkers. Oh my lord. They must have been like 10 minutes. They were so bad. Like, I felt like sometimes the load times were longer than the matches. <laughs> and then you got to the final bolus challenge, right? And this is so hard to beat. And you just have to retry and retry and retry it every time. It's a 10 minute load time. Woof. And we still all played it because we loved it. You know what I mean? It was still amazing. Hey, it can load as long as it wants, as long as it doesn't look like MTG Go. Or MTG O. <laughs> Woof. Alright, our opponent's trying to do stuff still. It's at this point just annoying me. We've got 21 damage on board of Trampolonis. Uh, yeah, it's not only the life total that's messed up. We've lost our card names as well. You'll see that none of the, the names are there um, and it's definitely like some form of font error I think so how it's entered so slow that was crazy let's take the draw come on Come on, man. Oh, they're gonna do it now because they know I'm looking for something. You dirty dog. They could have one more of those. <sighs> they have two crabs in play. That's actually a little bit upsetting to me if I'm being honest. That's not very good. Yeah, block. No, they block the seven sixes with your craps, bro. Mitigate some of that trample pan. Wait, come on. Oh, down to five. Down to five. <laughs> We're going to just try to like, finish them next turn, so I'm going to... You know, maybe we need that one additional damage. What does Trail of Crumbs give us? Nothing. 
Think you can mill me? Think you can mill me? Down to nine. Ah! Ah! Oh, man. What else do you do against mill decks? Just like act like a lunatic. Just that's just it. You just sit here. Nothing. <laughs> Two cards left, bruh. As long as it's not a Fable Passage. You know what I mean? You do not have enough blockers to mitigate the five damage. Right? I didn't look if they played a land or not this turn. I've not been paying attention. I've been jagging off. Come on. Finish this. A little bit another game to play. People are like willing to go the mile. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Have they been sitting on that the whole time? Or did they just top it a lot? That's upsetting to me. <sighs> wow. If they draw a land, I'm going to rage. I'm gonna chode out here. LOL. We have two mana. Uh, you know, it costs two to sack it, and we don't have a third to draw. That's just the price we pay. We will get, oh gosh, two damage in and lose a very good attacker. Do we wait and go next turn? They're milling for six. We draw. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Uh, if they draw a passage or if they're sitting on a passage, we're screwed. The draw spell, we're probably screwed. I think we go for it. We can't sack the food and draw though, we don't have enough mana. We only have two available mana. This has got summoning sickness. So I'm wondering if we attack now, you know, lose our beast, and steal the two damage down to three. Next turn, we have one, two, three. Yeah, I think we go for it, don't we? Lose our beast, they block. We have 19 life, we're not worried about anything. And now they're gonna block our beast, the 2-2, two, two, a 1-1, one, one, and we have three 1-1s one, to go around. That should be the play. Let's see though, you know what I mean? There's so many things they, they could do to, to ruin that for us. Close. The stealing of our creature was oppressive, man. They're looking at their graveyard. Uh, so it is going to be the Agadim's return. Oh, man, that is not great. They do only pull out the one blocker. But that's all they needed. And they get the mill. So if there's... Oh, and there's removal. Great. Awesome! Why I ought to... We're dead on the land pole. Let's make them suffer. Oh my god, we have so many. We should have activated a Garenbrig for an additional one. Uh, let's leave it here. I think, you know, we probably want to uh, <sighs> cry a little bit first, but after we're done crying, you know, I think we do want to get that draw from the food. So we gotta leave four land up. It costs two to sack, and we have two crumbs, so we want a double draw. So that's gonna cost two there as well for four.
Well, it wasn't a land, so we get another turn. Vivian. And we gotta be paying attention here. Trail of Crumbs does nothing for us. Do we want to draw that Troll King right there? Yeah, because if they draw a land, we're dead anyways. <sighs> you jerk. Rogues are so annoying. Let me grab a little life, not that it matters. Attack me, brah! Come on over! You can hit for a few, can't you? Now the thing is, Vivian's minus ability works great with the Troll King, but there's no cards for us to pull. There's no cards for us to pull. Right? We need the trample more so than anything. We are not drawing. We should have declined a couple times earlier, I guess, probably as well. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is looking pretty risky, bisques. I'm gonna turn around for a little bit. I can't stand to watch this. Oh, God. Just deep breaths, Greg. <sighs> it's terrible because I have to hit priority, probably. <laughs> It's okay, we got this. They didn't pull land, they would have already dropped it and been laughing at me. You know what I mean? Ha ah, ha ha ha! Mailed another one! <laughs> so, you know, hopefully there's that. Uh, the thing is, if it's a rogue, we also mill by a bunch. It was a cling to dust? No way. I think we got him. Wow. Absolutely wowzers. Down to the very last card. <laughs> <sighs> that is thoroughly worth it. Up to nine though, so that's actually tricky because they've cast this dang cling to dust so many times. Jesus. Cost four at least. Uh, only three times. Nine life. Wow. Do we have enough trample for that? Because the, uh, the seven six blocks quite a bit here. The trail does nothing for us. What? Yes, please attack me. I'm not sure you're serious. Oh, vigilance. Uh, on the one. They should have kept the other one to defend. Nice. Um, da, 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 da. I hate rogues, don't you? I hate rogues. That's uh, the chain web Arichner. I know there's no name there, but that goes great against rogues. We're going to throw that in there. You know, fight effects are really fun against rogues. Wicked Wolf will do great there. Vivian's plus one for a 3-3 three, three beast with reach is really good against rogues. We'll keep that there. This dodges some of their removal. So we'll take that. 
That puts us at 65 cards in deck with a minute and a half left. We're gonna have to sideboard some Jazz out. Love Struck Beast can go. If we can get the Great Henge in play, uh, we're looking a lot better. I like the uh, Primal Might, but it could be awkward. Ooze can go. Ooze can go. I think the Primal Mites could come in and we could drop something else, but what would it be? Probably Trail of Crumbs, but we need that to keep up with their value. We could toss a henge for Kolgla for, you know, swiping at the Thought Thief. Or we just rely on the Wolves and the Reach from Vivian. And then we'll play the henge for value so we don't run out of cards. Because they've got, uh, you know, really good just control of the field and it's annoying and I hate it. <laughs> oh, we have the henge in play. We have a, a goosey goose. So I like that. Uh, and a little bit of removal, maybe we can key in with the mammoth, hopefully. Land? No. So do we play slow, probably? Or do we try to rush it? We'll play slow to make sure we hit the wolf. Probably on three, in all honesty, to kill this crab as soon as we can. Three land off the top. Wow. There's a fourth. Cheerio, mate. Passing here. A second crab? Come on, man. This isn't fair. At what point is it too much? Auto pay, sack the food. Chomp, 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 chomp. What's for dinner? Going to Red Lobster, baby. Get some crab. Little crab cakes. <laughs> wow. Sick meal, bro. So when the first Troll King makes three, we can play the other with it. Uh, it's gonna be fun. We need our third forest before we play our Castle Ginger Brute. It, I don't think it's Castle Ginger Brute, Ginger Brute Cabin. Sorry, it should be a castle. Castle Ginger Brute, and it would be a, a gingerbread house. Anyways. Let's attack with our wolf skis. Is this instant speed? Sorcery speed. We could have gone for a bigger hit. Let's make food about it. If we push this up, we can cheat in the henge. Ah? Right, so we, it costs one. We have four, so it gives us one. No. Okay, we're losing our Troll King right away. That's actually pretty gross. Probably their turn, though. We get to make a food. Killing this other crab, baby. As soon as I get a chance. <sighs> There's a couple different ways I think we should go. We need two mana left over, so we can cast this for three. Um, then we're sacking a food. Uh, let's do for two. Three total. Should be able to dodge a counter, hopefully. It's just in a gate. A little aggressive. Okay, we can trail in. 
getting a draw engine in play over removal is actually not that bad. Um, think about it. Down to 17. More 39. We do not want to let this mill go on too far. This is going to pull a swamp, probably. Deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. That reactivates their cling to dust now. So our chain web arachner is probably gone, so. <laughs> Ooh. Even, odd, odd. We get to keep our goose. Really worried about that wolf. Not bad. They're totally tapped right now. I'm gonna take advantage of it. Reach. Screw you, rogues. And let's go wide in the field. Even though we're sacking a food to do so, because it just creates the other. Right? It's just like a free body in play. Try and get all the value you can every single turn. Or as much as you can. Or, I mean, different strategy. I guess you could try to withhold it, let them value out, and then wipe the field. But, you know, we don't have much field wipes. We just have fight effects. And recursion. Oh, they spent their whole turn drawing. That might not be that bad. We can Vivian minus on our Troll King, maybe? Or we just... No, we lose our Harbinger. Well... That makes perfect sense to me. Every boat joins a chorus of roars. We get searched. I mean, the wolf's on top. We could have waited. Uh, but I think that's just exactly what we're going for anyways. And it's like a free play. And we killing that crab, baby. I told you I was coming for you. Crab cakes for dinner tonight. Um, the draw for another Troll King. Yeah. Right, just because it creates so much when it comes into play. And I don't really mind your death touch, so get out of here. We're coming in with three more damage. And it seems to be one of the strongest matchups against Demir Rogues. There's a lot of reach, there's a lot of fight effects, there's a lot of draw to keep up with there into the story. The only thing is, can you beat them before they mill you, right? That's the, that's the only problem here. We're at 26, they're at 41, so you can see just how fast they're going through our library. But without more extinction events, even, 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 odd, odd. Even would kind of make me sad because uh, this is an odd as well, so that stays. Let's keep note of that and try to play more odds. All right, so we lose our Troll King. Whatever. And then they're going to try to cling it from the grave, I'd assume. Gaining three life to 17, we lose our second Troll King now. And that's how we beat them the first game. So, you know, I don't want to get too ahead of myself saying that this is a, you know, an unbeatable match for them. And we should just auto win. But I think that there's a little bit of odds, at least in our favor. We might be getting roped. Or they're just they're deep deep diving into the IQ storage banks. 
right? If they cling, they lose death touch because they empty their library. Or their graveyard, sorry. Right, they've got eight. It needs, I believe, eight in there. So they would be having five come out, plus that is six, so down to two in grave, right? So that's something uh, that they're having to consider. And I think we hit him with the hello. Good game. Just what you get for playing rogues. Sorry. Should probably take our uh, our troll king, but. You know, if they take a Troll King, then they a Reckoner sitting there, and it can remove any one of their rogues with flying. You know, so that's great. They're going to try to just hold on, right? Up to 17. They might attack. I'm going to Trizade. Vivian's very important to me. Not only is that an issue, but when we eat our delicious food... It just doesn't really matter, right? Indestructible trumps death touch. The only thing it doesn't really trump is being bounced to your hand and exile effects. Let's plus up. More reach, baby. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> and let's... Mm. I think let's just keep pushing our Troll King. I know the Henge is great, but in this matchup, I don't want to draw so many cards. You know, we've got everything we need to utilize here. Uh, it's just a land, so whatever. They can mill that. You get a nice hit in here, though. For 7, down to 10. They already gained 3 life. And turn. Oh, and it's a... An opponent's graveyard. I was looking at their graveyard. Sorry. It's our graveyard. Within Thieves Guild. I thought it would lose Death Touch if they cast Cling, but it didn't because um, the Thieves Guild's Death Touch comes from our graveyard having eight or more cards, not theirs. More removal. And they can Cling again. But that's totally fine with me because they're getting trapped in a cycle where they're having to deal with the Troll King with what seems to be, what, uh, four, six mana every turn. So they do gain a little bit of life out of that, but the end of it all. Just not. Play something with flying, man. I want to snag it. This has been in the sideboard against rogues for me in literally every deck uh, that I've played that incorporates green. What? Oh, because they don't have enough mana. You dawn a new adventure, baby. Defenders, you know what I mean? They want to stay alive. Minus two, troll king a -ling <laughs> We're gonna wicked wolf something, I think. Um, no, we don't want to draw. We learned about the risks of that. We're fine. Oh, it doesn't trigger it? You fool. You fool! I guess our highest cost. Would this count? No, let's leave that there. Whatever. Pull a birdie. Makes more food for us, and that's the key component there. Oh gosh. Guess we just play this as the mammoth. No draws. I 
I'm still gonna play the Erechner. And we still going in, baby. We got food to eat for indestructible, so your death touch can take a hike. And we are closing in. They need an extinction event. Let me tell you what. Big time. That's fine. Let it roll. Big shout out to our Black Lotus pet. Which I've been enjoying. Okay, just a nice little bloom there. Every time you... Click it, it hides from you though. Come back to me. Come back to me. Alrighty, chomp, chomp, chomp. No draws, right? We're declining all of those. We're down to 19 already. Uh, big hits. But look at this field state. You need an extinction event, Jace. I don't think you've got one, brother. And I incorporated a couple odds into play. Right? We've got the elf, the mammoth, and the spider. Which is great. Good stuff, good stuff. I'm willing to make this match against Demir Rogues last as long as possible. If they're into it, I'm into it. Like, this just feels so good. <laughs> Sorry. Better luck next time. And, you know, what a powerful deck it appears to be, even with me as the pilot. <laughs> Alrighty, let's dive right into it. Playing first. Mono green food. We have a goose. That's basically all we need in an opening end. I mean, a lot of land, but I'm sure we'll use it somehow. Whoops. Cat cam is still in play. Let's get that out of, out of the way. It's a custom pet. You have to uh, unlock it within the game. Not the Black Lotus, uh, you know, the actual cat. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's Miss Maya, if you guys are unfamiliar. She's my companion. But we did get this Lotus Field. Uh, or sorry, not Lotus Field, Black Lotus. Which is like real cool. Neat. Let's play slow. Oh, the Bane of Monsters. You know, I've been really wanting to make a party deck around Javel. Trail of Crumbs. Right, we do have to pay one. To draw a card. That's fine, it's just the counter. And now if the goose gets removed, they gain three life and draw a card. They're going for it, yeah. So the goose is going, and we're just going to take a draw here. Taking the ooze, you know, more creatures is good. Mammoth is nice to have out there. Take it slow. The only threat is if it gets removed. No way. Nice, you dog. 
three life, draw a card. So it's like uh, the removals at no uh, downfall, really. Let's go wide around the removal. Onto the ooze. Makes sense. The ooze can get crushed by a giant. Chevelle himself has death touch. Nice. So much removal here. I mean, drawing of the card uh, really helps. Technically, they should be able to draw a new removal every turn, right? Let's take the draw. Nice. Let's take the draw again. they hold another Chevelle, they can risk to lose the first. Yeah, they must. I mean, I'm okay having it out of play, as long as there's no replacement for it. Oof, right? That's not good. It's a warrior, eh? I like that. All right, let's see if the Troll King can survive here. The uh, food allows him to be replayed, which is really nice. So they want to exile it. We could sack three food, pay two mana, draw two cards, plus bring our king back into play. They have three mana available to fight. It's good. We'll get the kill on it though as well. I mean, they do draw a card, gain three life. That's gonna be a common theme here until the end. Ouch. We can only do this on our own turn, so it's going to have summoning sickness. Uh, it's bad he's got first strikes. So we're just leaving that. We do have four food available, so what we want to do is sack one. Take that draw. That goose is good, but the wolf is better. We get a food token from the gingerbread, which is great. That means we can get our wicked wolf in. Fighting plus sacking of food for indestructible. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. Oh my God, you fool. We did that the wrong way. Whoops. Yeah, I mean, we may as well just draw out at this point. Like multiple Vivians, because it's going to get removed. Did for five. Taking some of that life back. I mean, we're at 24, so they've not been dealing too much damage to us. They've really just been controlling the whole board state.
Look around us is six and eight from the grave, I believe. Six from the grave. I was saying, cultivate. Uh, I don't really mind that. I believe it does come in tapped, correct? Yes. Four mana available still. You can play from the top with the Heart of Keld. Wasting uh, one of those foods really sucks because we can't get the Troll King back, but I think we'll be okay. No way. Eating. Oh my god, we did it again? Alright, gingerbread makes a food at least. Why am I doing this, uh... The incorrect way. Whatever. At the end of the day, it's fine. The goose will make food for us. Okay. <laughs> you gotta click on the wolf to eat the food, not the food, man. Let's make that uh, food for this other wicked wolf before we attack. Okay. We get that damage and Trail of Crumbs is going to win us the game, hands down. I mean, they can bring the big baddie in. Uh, and it's a 12-12. That actually sucks. We toss the food or the planeswalker. Planeswalker. Nice. They're going to replay it. They're going to replay it. Well, I do need one Vivian more than I need the food. All right, unless they play a land, there's no fight. That 12-12 is tough. I don't know what to do about that. Are you serious? Goose is gone. I'll double block. I ain't scared. We have to take rid of uh, Kroxa immediately. That's our first priority. We should have. Well, no. Let's just plus and hopefully that does something. Every day is a new oh gosh. This really sucks. One, two, three, four mana available. We've got four creatures. We could go to a seven. I don't know if that works at all. Yikes. Let's hold the phone. Might have to stand up here. Got that dead leg going when your leg falls asleep and you get those tingles. It's just like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's terrible and it concentrates in your foot. Ah! <laughs> I do not care for that. I'm gonna maybe stand for the rest of this video. We woke Miss Maya up. She's not too pleased about that. We see a questing beast in play. That's not good for us, right? That is really unpleasant actually. <laughs> Well, if you're going to fight us, I'm going out kicking and screaming. Start with your graveyard.
Right, we'll get as many plus one plus ones off of pull crannels as we possibly can. Leaving the Troll King for last. Makes it more manageable, that's for sure. He's serious. And now they're off the top. All right, it's our turn. Trail of Crumbs off the top, which is our third. Complete creatures off the top too. That's exciting. So let's uh, Castle Garen rig this. Mammoth in. Wolf in. Yeah, baby. I love it. We're going to do this correct here. We're going to kill this questing beast. Tap the wolf. Then sack the food. LOL. <laughs> and I believe we will also pay for the draw. Let's kill that big old beast. Liking that. Let me tell you what. Let's play the land. Mammoth goes up. We don't really care about that. Trail of Crimson play, which we probably should have played earlier, then we could have got a double draw. Let's plus here, make a 3 3 with reach, just in case there's a rankle. You never know with these guys, right? Pass our turn here. If we can get value and just run away with it, and I never thought we would get here in the match uh, with those two early Chevals, which were just basically removing everything we played. Our Vivian's gone, but. I think we're golden here. These wicked wolves have been such a huge help. We just have a land next turn, so we're not really doing anything. Uh, the mammoth. I was gonna say the mammoth could attack. We're gonna draw two cards here due to our land of war visionaries. Same. Another wolf, that's good. This is before their attack phase, so maybe we should have waited, but I wanted to try to find some form of interaction there. And it's down to two, uh, so it's not really a threat. We do have the reach defenders. The guy's going all out. Not enough engrave to replay it for a little bit, unless they kamikaze here. You know, we've got that last food, and this is our fourth wolf. They've got to be fully triggered at this point. We're going to take a double draw here. Where is all this land coming from? All right, we got another Troll King. That's nice. We should have Castle Garen rigged earlier. Nice. All right, let's take it to the sideboard. Four wolves, that's crazy. There's so much removal here, right? We've seen a ton of removal from our opponent with these early Bane of Monsters and then just, oh my God, this might be weird. Jund is very aggressive. Let's take in our Harbingers. Let's take in more Ooze, right? The Harbinger removes or kind of dances around some of the removal that's black and the Ooze can eat a Kroxa, it can lessen their library so they can't escape pull crannels back into play. Those are our reasons there. And uh, moving forward from that, we have four cards to drop because of that. Really hard drops. I think the visionary can go down to two just because it's so easy to remove. Um, Yes, it does replace itself, but it's very easily dealt with. So we could also, hmm. The Primal Might can go. We have a minute left. I might take one of the Visionaries back. Um.
just because it like it does replace itself, right? Is the thing. So I think we're okay here. The oven could be okay um, if we can start sacking the appropriate things. We don't want to thin our board state too much, though, right? Down, got a little bit of the ceiling poking through here. Uh, you know, we've got the wolf. Let's keep it. There we go. So the cabin needs to be the fourth land to enter play. Garen Brick needs to be the second. We just pulled a second wolf. We have two troll kings and two wicked wolves. I don't know what's going on here. If we can actually survive that long. It could be a unique story. A Harbinger, that's a three drop. Now we're looking a little bit friendlier. It's also a sideboard uh, grab too, so it's gonna dodge some of the removal they have. I like how the Lotus is blossoming from a skull. That's pretty neat. So hopefully the Harbinger can avoid whatever removal they have. It dodges Bone Crusher Giant too because of the three toughness. Rankle has reach. Now this is annoying, but you know, Wicked Wolf's gonna make quick work of that via the gingerbread cabin. Oh, that's not a forest. Castle Garenbrake is not a forest. We have to go with our forest. Oh, Rankle sacked itself. Hmm. We're wasting our mana this turn. Sucks, but. I'd rather utilize these wolves as what they are. Oh, you dog. Cabin makes the food. Troll King can block. Plus it makes a bunch of food. Cultivate, that's fine. Right, using most of their mana. They've not cast mana this turn, so they can have one come in, bringing them to three. Well, Kranos can fight and die. Right? So we're removing it without losing a Wicked Wolf. A <laughs> trail of crossbows. This costs five to activate, doesn't it? Yeah, we only have four. So let's uh, sack some food. We'll take the draw. We'll take Vivian. That's great. This is good stuff. I think we just go all out and not play anything. You know, more land, whatever. Secondary Trail of Crumbs is really good. Uh, a Goose is great as well because it creates food though. It's going to get removed is the thing where Trail of Crumbs probably won't. But, you know, that's removal out of their hand at the end of the day, so that's fine. The Goose also makes a food when it comes in, which reactivates our Troll King if it's removed here. Our opponent does have now five in the lab or graveyard, including Polkrano, so they need. Ooh, nice. We're both evens. Oh no, Goose is out. Sorry. <laughs> That's good for us. Oh my god, you guys. Look at this draw. I was complaining about this the other day, where it's like our opponent only has four kinds of cards in their deck, and they are drawing all four copies every match. That's what we're doing right now. This is groovy. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a lot of food, baby. Another event. <laughs> They're gonna die when I drop this third troll king. 
Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. They get the goose, this is a good play. Right, only two mana left though, so oh, there's the third, we'll see the giant. Crazy stuff. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Castle Garenbrig for five, which, you know, is a very cheap Troll King. And uh, that's ten. And now we play the Henge for two. Oh, yeah. We're up to three mana here. What do you do? Every time we replay the troll with the treasures, it will trigger the hench draw as well, so. Disgusting, right? And they are using extinction events. That's their third extinction event. Wow. They're getting just as lucky as we are. That's crazy, man. Just gonna gain two life here. Not gonna sack our food. We're gonna leave that stockpile there, baby. <laughs> They're ready to play Polkranos again. Let's play it slow. Eating the giant. We get the draw. And now we still have to make ourselves indestructible, unfortunately, because of the four power on the giant. And we will draw here, taking that ooze. And we can grab Polkranos, I believe. Can we not from the grave? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's grab that free mana, because we're going to be using it all within our ooze, which is a creature ability. Yup. We got another land here as well. Let's take out Rankle. Bone Crusher Giants as well. I think that's all they've got. We have to go to our R's now. Take out the Harbinger. That utilizes all of the mana within the pool, um, so that's good enough for me. Just so we're not wasting any. Good game. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That was quite a lengthy match, but a great way to demonstrate some of the mid-game and late-game power of mono green food. Alrighty then. Mono green food is good. Uh, winning matches with Wicked Wolf against the Rogues feels so satisfying. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, had no problem doing that for 40 minutes at all, right? Uh, I really like this deck. I feel like it might suffer a little bit um, against some of the more exile decks. Uh, again, the Indestructible for Wicked Wolf can make it through the Shatters and stuff. But if you are getting hit with, uh, I feel like, a control deck with the Exile instead of just the Rogue subbing in Exile, um, you know, maybe you get in trouble. But there's a lot of draw engine behind there, so they're going to need uh, other things as well. Now, that's why I say, like, I love when the meta is diverse and it kind of shifts, right? Because we see decks like this pop up that weren't really relevant before. Now they're really good, they're oppressive, they're fun to play. But because now this comes into the forefront, people are like, well, you know, Esper Control can counter that really easily. They've got uh, White Exile, Black Exile, and Blue Draw to keep up, for example, right? So we might see some other things come into play. Now we get this nice mixing pot of all the card pool. Uh, so it's a sign of a really healthy meta. Yes, rogues are super crazy, but they got pushed so hard by wizards that it's not even funny. We had so many good rogues drop over the last few sets. so. It'll pass, the fad will leave, people will start to play some of these other decks that I'm going to continue to showcase for you guys every single day. Um, you know, we even got the free to play rogues if you're wanting to start on that 
journey. <laughs> I don't know though, right? Uh, so thank you again for your time and attention. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share to a friend. Hit that bell icon so you're notified of all of our future uploads. 500,000 gems to give away, uh, nearly about 350. And I think we're going to be doing more giveaways. So get yourself on our giveaway list. Do not miss out on that. That's the Discord. There's going to be some other requirements there as well. We've got free entry cash prize tournaments for you guys as well every single month, multiples. Uh, so, you know, come hang out. We've got a great community. Uh, come and introduce yourself. Say hello. And, uh, you know, I'd love to talk to you. With that all being said, this video is brought to you by Magic the Gathering. Well, not really. It was brought to you by me, let's be honest. But uh, Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant, it helps a little bit, right? So check that download out uh, via the Overwolf link in the description below. It's on the right side in the video. If you're watching on your phone, hit that title and it'll give you the description to look at. It's got metagame analysis and you'll see Demir Flash, 23.71% of the standard meta. Big ol' wolves, right? So we're beating down Demir Flash today, which is great. And then you get so much other stuff involved here that you should check out as well. So thank you guys for your time and attention. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share to a friend. I think I already said that. Or financially on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube, and Amazon. Thank you again. Go watch another video and we'll see you soon. Nice. Nice. Nice.